Welcome to the Aftermarket Report Sunday's edition with Vegas and Jim, September 8th, 2019, and Miss Vegas has a great watch list for us this week. Please subscribe and ring that bell for future updates. Yes, and good morning, everyone. Sunday, September the 8th, and before we start and I give you the list, I just want to say congratulations to all of Canada and congratulations to Bianca Andreescu who won the U.S. Open. And the reason I'm sharing this exciting information actually is because she's the first Canadian ever in all of Canada ever in history to ever win a uh, Grand Slam title. No Canadian has ever even advanced to the tennis um, even semifinals, quarterfinals, and yet alone now the finals. So 19-year-old Bianca from Mississauga, Ontario won. And I got to say, I'm a big Serena Williams fan too. So I, I was really uh, happy to enjoy seeing this match. And uh, it was great. So congratulations to Canada on having uh, the first uh, U.S. Open trophy. Finally, she's going to be hopefully... Um, celebrating across the country so congrats Canada okay so on to today's watch list um, we're going to talk about Twitter snap Home Depot cool ENDP Roku Lulu and I want to talk to you about some Campbell soup. so let's get started so let's talk about Twitter well you know what you guys all know Twitter we even have a Twitter feed Jim can show you um, on our website. But, you know, Twitter is a stock I've been following and uh, really like Twitter, long on Twitter, like the fact that Twitter is having the 52-week highs. Um, it's also, you know, if you notice the chart all of last week, it's been slowly climbing up. So the stock and chart is definitely showing some strength all over the place. Um, we actually were able to get option calls on Twitter. We had bought the $43 and $44 calls. And let me tell you, we were in the money beautifully on Friday. We bought those calls the week before because we've been following the stock. We've been talking about the stock on our videos. So if you've been listening, you also would be in the money. So, Jim, let's hear where we're going to go with Twitter because it's super bullish still. And on a beautiful, strong uptrend. Yeah, it's on a very strong uptrend. Real nice one. So it's kind of hard to say what it's going to do come Monday until Monday comes around. For right now, though, we have a long resistance at 46.70. And right now, we are at we closed at 45.42. I'm looking at the yearly chart. It can pull back to the 9 EMA on the yearly chart. So let's pull up the 20. And I see a support level right down here at 43.59 if it decides to pull back to a low support, this little channel right in here. And then it'll, it'll retrace back up. Or it might just go ahead and break out of this kind of uh, symmetrical flag that we had Friday. We had that, that bottom, and then all, the way, all of a sudden she started bouncing up and just a beautiful little high by the end of the day. And that was right around, I'm going to put it, my resistance level right around 45.62 but I have a 45.48 resistance we got a break so let me pull up the one day one minute see if I can find one more support down here I see one right here so I'm going to say your first support is going to be right around this 45.08 area maybe your there's one right in here so First one right around 4532, 4508 for your second, and that third one's going to be right here at 4463. And the resistance we got to break is going to be this one right up here on top at 4567, bring it to new highs. But I think it can consolidate Monday or start to break out, maybe have a sharp pullback and then start breaking uh, Friday's high of 4567. That's Twitter. And the next one's going to be Snap. So you know what? You guys uh, paying attention. What's that? What's that, Jim? Oh, um, we can hear you now. Go ahead. Okay. 
Um, so I said, you better snap to it and pay attention. Oh, <laughs> uh, because uh, we're noticing on snap. Uh, definitely, I saw the MACD center line crossing. Um, definitely had an inside day on the stock. And you know what? I want to talk about, you know, following the money. So, you know, one of the things that I'm really focused on a lot is helping also small accounts. And Jim's been very involved and in helping people with smaller accounts trade and find good setups as well. So Jim's been a great help to me as well. And together, we've been helping people make money on option trading because we actually show and share um, you know, where is the money going in on these stocks? And you can see that on the SNAP uh, ticker, there is a lot of money flowing in into the stock. And so we actually took some option calls on SNAP. And, um, you know, it's a good swing trade in my opinion. Uh, so definitely if you don't trade options and you like to trade stocks over the $10, uh, definitely this is one you should be definitely looking at. Um, but in terms of, you know, if you don't have the cash, I mean, this is why I love options, because if you don't have the money to buy, you know, even let's say 100 shares of Snap or even 50 shares of Snap, um, or yet alone even 20, I mean, you can be definitely looking at the Snap calls. And so some of the Snap calls that we've been looking to get, we have the ones for the $16 strike, and we also have the ones for the $16.50 and the $17 uh, strikes. And those are the ones that expire. These are weekly. So these are the ones that we are, that expire next week. We actually bought the $16 ones um, for 52 cents. And we also bought the ones for the 1650 strike. We bought those on Friday at 29 cents. So definitely keep a watch on those snap call ideas and definitely, um, definitely watch it on the chart for a swing trade. Again, for those of you that like over the $10 stocks. And Jim, let's hear about Snap. Oh, I chart. think that was a good call right there. Um, let's pull up. So this is the daily one minute. Let's pull up the yearly. And you can get a year of resistance high of 1863, 1836. And I have a resistance right there at 1801. So that would be kind of my target area to break resistance to that high of 1836. This is a yearly, and we right now we've kind of pulled back to that 9 and that 34 snugging up on the yearly chart. So let's pull up the 20 day. I'll get a second look at the one hour, and we've even bounced off from probably a good, nice little cup and handle maybe here, a low of 15 bucks all the way up to 18, 1668, and we have a resistance that we need to get to of 1701. 1701 to up here to this 1709 area and I got to chalk that in for a little channel so support level I'd say right around the 1560 that's a whole buck for low support second's going to be right in here right around the 1580 and that first one between 1619 and 1631 somewhere in there with those two three resistance to break with a long up here right around I'd say 1750 would be a good one to get in tomorrow. I mean, if because it had some pretty good option uh, buying on Friday at 1750, so I'll be watching that one myself. And that's going to be Snap. The next one's going to be Home Depot. Yes, I want to talk to you guys about Home Depot. Definitely want to also keep a watch on. Yep. I mean, you know, the earnings are done. The earnings are out of the way, and they had a very, you know interesting earnings report but you know home depot is definitely one to keep watching for a continuation if you look at the actual stock jim are you able to hear me yep um so if you look at the actual stock and the weekly chart you can see that home depot has been going up three days in a row it's got new 52 week high closings it's also gapped up so I really like the fact that the stock has gapped up nicely. Oh, yeah. And um, it had a nice 52-week closing high on Friday. So <clears throat> definitely Home Depot, excuse me, is one to watch. Um, you know, it is definitely a little bit in an overbought territory. But you know what? I love 52-week high setups. And uh, Home Depot is definitely one um, that I'll be looking at from an options perspective. Um, because obviously, you know, you have to put a lot of money to make a little bit of money 
t on the actual stock. So I'm going to trade it from the options perspective uh, because the stock is at 231.13 close on Friday. So, Jim, what are your thoughts on the Home Depot? Well, it's had a nice little bounce from 158 on the yearly chart, 158 all the way up to 231. And we proved that Friday. So it's had a nice little good uptrend here on this last little run for the last couple of weeks. And I'm trying to find a little support level, low, low support right around the 23.29 area. You could change this up. This is on a yearly chart. There's a 23.75 right there. Another one right down there. At the, and another one right here that we had to break, kind of like a double top that we had right in here. It's a little V down and V up. Then she pulled back and almost hit that 200. But right now, I'm going to say that low support's going to be right in this 223.75 area. It's going to be kind of its one that has to hold and it can touch down to this previous high we had right here at 22.21.31 then we'll put a couple more trend lines in here go to the 20 day so yeah first support see where we had this little top up here five days ago somewhere right around the 228.63.70 area even at 229.20, it can't. Oh, yeah, it's perfect right there. 229.20 for your first support. No lower than that 63. Has to hold. If not, we're going to go on down a little bit lower. And that could be right around here, 222 area. And that's HD. Well, resistance as we got a break is going to be that 232.01. And we did close at 230. 113 and that's a just gonna be one to watch it definitely has the momentum behind it and the next one we're going to talk about is cool you are so cool so you know cool had uh you know a, a nice beautiful setup here under five dollar stock i mean it closed at 351 what i like about it you guys know one of my favorites pocket pivot and when i see a pocket pivot i am definitely keeping this look at how that's beautiful candle at the close here and um this stock has a lot of momentum in it too um we could see obviously it had a bit of a spinning top and a nice pocket pivot going on here now you know this company cool is actually quite cool um you can actually see here let me just pull it up here because i lost my page here one second jim can you pause it for one sec Okay, sorry guys, so I wanted to talk about Cool. So one of the things, you know, this company is called Seska Therapeutics. Um, you know, they had very good earnings and the earnings was about a month ago, August 13th. You know, one of the nice things about this company, um, they're in the, they're in the uh, pharmaceutical industry, obviously, and uh, they look into cell processing and cell therapies for regenerative medicine. But what I liked about this company is they had a lot of achievements. Um, they are very involved in the cord blood bank in Asia, and um, that's a really big deal. They're also involved in thermogenesis in both Canada and Thailand, as well as in Southeast Asia. But the company had a very strong quarter. They had revenue growth by 115%. The revenue was $4.3 million compared to uh, $2 million the year before. So I think that's great. The company has a lot of new product launches, and that also helped expand their revenue base. And also, it was achieved by aggressive measures to also reduce cost. And so this CEO and CFO, they're doing a fantastic job at the company because they cut cost and brought in the money. So that's fantastic for this kind of a company. And we should definitely keep on watch on this one because the volume was really strong on Friday. And if you actually paid attention to that volume, you would know it was one of the strongest 
uh, small cap stocks that had one of the highest volumes of the day on Friday. So definitely watch this actual stock um, next week. All right, we had a low at 210 and we've had a high and that happened last year about this time at 474. And we definitely are on a uptrend here for the past 10 to 15 days, almost three weeks. Resistance area, we got a break, is coming up here. It's what we tried to have back here a little bit ago. And that, I would say this area right around 369 area. It did close at 351. So we're going to put it at 369 is going to be important to bring it up to the 381 area on high on up. Let me pull back this 20 day now. So we did have a 550 high. It could have been after hours Friday, 551. And she's kind of pulled back. So you got to look at the breakout. And this is kind of extensive breakout that we did have on $2 breakout. So I would say maybe if we can get back to a 50% retracement, and that's going to be in this channel right in here, this low $4 area. First support's going to be one resistance that's going to have to break is going to be this 472. But I think it could pull back to this little area right in here for kind of like your your first support. And it's going to be 403 to 419. And then maybe get the bounce up to 472 for resistance. And that would the one that would have to break. So that's going to be your hard resistance. Your low support is going to be right down here where this triangle started. And that's going to be right here at 358. So if it does decide to sell off hard and it doesn't hold this barrier right in here, this pivot point, it can fall back to the top of that resistance at 358. And the resistance we're going to have to break is going to be 472. And that's going to be cool. And the next one we're going to oh, talk about. Okay. I do want to mention uh, to add to the, the actual ticker to cool before we go on yep. is that cool also is a low float stock uh -oh. okay so if you guys take a look at the float on this actual stock yep. you'll see that this is under how many sh how many float in the shares 2.5 1.7 very tiny thin float yep. so this has the potential to move um uh, very quickly and if it moves i don't i'm not gonna be shocked to see this go over five bucks in my opinion um, because we know how these low floats run, and this can do a float rotation at any time. So this could have a pop this week. So definitely keep this on tight watch. Um, I'll definitely be taking a swing trade position uh, starting tomorrow. And they're also going to be presenting at the H.C. Wainwright Global Investment Conference on Tuesday afternoon. And it's going to be at the Lottie New York Palace Hotel. So um, they're going to be at a conference at the H.C. Wainwright Global Investment Conference. So you know what? Don't be shocked. We're going to hear about the stock this week. It's definitely going to go on scanners. Why wait for a scanner? We're giving you the heads up on this particular stock. And the time to, let, to consider getting into a stock is before the scanner alerts you. So... Do your due diligence and check this one out. Yeah, I think okay. we got it pretty good. This low support, 358, the, maybe the first pivot point right in here, right around the 403 to 419 with the resistance. We got a break. It's going to be that 472 back to 550. And Miss Vegas says that $5 is, is, and this is going to be kind of like a, you know, there's going to be a lot of low floaters in it. So, some would call it a pump and dump in a way, but we like the momentum of it. That's cool. Next one is going to be ENDP. Okay, so ENDP is Endo Health Solutions, and uh, Endo Health Solutions, you know, is a um, specialty branded product. Uh, they're into obviously the pharmaceutical industry. They have a lot of branded pharmaceutical products. Um, they also have what they call the Paladin Labs, and they help, um, you know, they do a lot of research in there, obviously. And, uh, you know, they have different companies. They got the Paladin Lab, they got the Par Pharmaceutical, they got the Endo Pharmaceutical. But this one here, um, if you see also the volume on Friday, 
I mean, the volume on Friday on this stock, if I can try to go back to it here, um, was pretty high on uh, ENDP. So one to definitely not uh, fall asleep on. Uh, that was a very nice volume. I see that the Bollinger Bands were super, super tight. And I like that when they're closing like that, because to me, it's one to watch for a continuation uh, potentially this week. The earnings on this company are not due till September 27. So we don't got to worry about that at this time. But definitely, I'm seeing an expansion pivot on this stock. And so definitely one to watch because there is money flowing into this particular small cap stock. So Jim, um, the other thing I want to mention too on this ENDP is I'm also seeing um, some flow on the option side. So I'm going to send you, Jim, a screenshot yep. of what I'm seeing on ENDP. You could show the viewers. Um, but I am seeing some option calls on the $4 strike. And the stock right now is trading under the 4 And we could see that the expiry date for September 20, um, there is good open interest on the $4 calls and obviously the ones for the 250 calls and $3 calls. Um, so definitely the, the two best ones, the two stronger ones with the open interest is the 250 and the $4. So definitely I'll be looking at that as well for the September 20, for those of you that don't want to buy the stock, but you want to consider the option. So Jim, let's hear about ENDP. All right. Well, let me pull up the chart. You can see we're definitely oversold. We did have a uh, yearly bottom just couple days ago down here at one ninety a dollar ninety seven and she had a huge breakout run she almost had to hit this resistance level area and that's going to be right around where it was almost at the top at 348 let me see if that's correct might raise it up just a little bit higher up to about 359 area I'm gonna put another trend line in there so that's the one we got to break. We're going to go to the 20 day now. There's 359. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so I think it can pull back to this $3 area. That's going to be kind of like your low support that it kind of needs to hold this little channel between. And I've got pretty much right around 299 all the way up to 308, 307 with a 303 little support area. It probably can pull back to that. There's a couple spots where it might bounce up. But this is going to be one that I'm definitely going to be watching. I think the low support's down here at 267 that it has to hold if it decides not to hold this little channel right in here. But I'm pretty sure it's going to bounce off this $3 area and bounce right back up here and try to break the resistance at 348. And then we have the 359, which is going to be the one that's going to bring you up out of that little bubble and bring you up higher. And that's ENDP. Keep it on watch. This could be a, like a nice little pullback bounce play at the bell. Don't jump in it. Wait for the first 15 minutes. You know, kind of tell you what direction it wants to go. Sometimes they bounce up and then they'll pull right back. And the next one we're going to talk about is Roku. Okay, so we see Roku, we're definitely still watching the stock. We traded the options. And you know what? Um, definitely still watching Roku. They did mention that Roku TV is coming to the UK. And uh, this is the first time that Roku is bringing their operating system outside in North America, which they did announce um, at an event. They call it the IFA. Um, Roku TV, you know, is one to watch. I mean, their key competitor is Amazon as well. And they're going to have international expansion of their Fire TV edition. And also they've partnered, um, Amazon partnered with manufacturers to also release the TVs in Europe. So I think what's going on here is that, you know, both companies have sold their standalone streaming hardware outside of North America for a number of years. So it looks like the competition is going to start getting heated between Roku and Amazon. And this article was actually saying that the um, market research suggests that Roku is ahead in North America and that Roku and Amazon's expansions internationally 
could change things on a worldwide basis. That is just amazing. Um, you know, last year the CEO said Roku is an ad business rather than a hardware business. And so the fact that the international launch of Roku TV has the potential to increase the reach of their platform, that is fantastic. I think Roku um, has a lot of smart TVs that are built in with the Roku software. And the fact that they're selling like crazy, um, I think that uh, we're going to see more uh, revenue coming in for this company. So definitely Roku, not to take off your list. Jim, your thoughts on Roku? We've been right from this all the way from $50. Uh, this has had a nice little year run. We've been on this for about six months now. Let's look at the yearly chart. 2630 down here was a low and we're already up here at 169.86 and we still keep beating the bears so this is a stock you got to watch out watching trends which way is it going to go we can tell by pulling up this 20-day chart we've not had too many red days on a ttm squeeze it just happened thursday and it kind of pulled back and then it almost gained respect created a little sending triangle friday and the resistance we got a break is going to be right around this 172.16 area. We did have a high of 173.20 on top of that wick. So I'm going to look for little pullback supports. I think we got one right in here. Maybe we're starting to form a, uh, a new channel, which I think we will see in that low support. It's going to be right around that 161.35 area. And the resistance we're going to have to break is going to be that 172.16. And in between that, it's going to be your like your support levels. So we'll call off the first support right here at 167.70. That's probably going to be right around your first area. Your second, right around the 165.26 with a low support and it can stop right in here. There's another support level right here at 163.45. And that could be probably your first little support with a strong buy down here at 161.35. Let's pull up the 20-day real fast. Whoop, 10-day. Get a better look at the 20-day. Yeah, I still stick with that one, this area right in here. No lower than that. Anything below that's going to be a strong buy. Now just watch the trend. If it decides to move up and we break that resistance of 172.16, we are going to go higher on it. And that's Roku. And we've been right about this ever since it's been down here at $50. And we're oh, still yeah. bullish on it. And the next one is going to be Lulu. Lulu. Lulu Lemon. Who doesn't wear Lulu Lemon? Mm. Um, I know. My nephew just went away overseas for a whole year he went to a new school and you know what he's never had any lululemon pants <laughs> he just found a beautiful pair he's so in love with lululemon now and i'm like where you been um so lululemon crushed wall street earnings as we know um they posted you won't even believe this but a 35 percent growth in men's sales there you go. So thank you to all the men that shop online or that have shopped uh, at the Lululemon stores. Um, they also um, revealed that they hope to double the men's online sales over the next five years. And they're going to also open an experiential store in Minneapolis Mall in November. Now, they opened up a store like this in Chicago back in July. And this is a very unique store because this store features a restaurant, yoga classes, and a meditation room. So looks like these kind of uh, stores are attracting customers. Because, you know, if you take yoga, you might go there to take a yoga class. And how smart is that? Then you're going to go there to meditate. And then you're going to probably browse through Lululemon store and probably buy something. So talk about thinking out of the box. Lululemon is doing that. Um, so the other thing that they mentioned as well 
Lululemon is they did say that they're looking to quadruple their international revenue by 2023. So this company is not going to stop. This is a Canadian company and they're doing very well. Very, very strong stock, not to be ignored. If you guys like, again, longer term investments, um, any dips on the stock, definitely consider for yourself for a longer term hold in your account. Definitely, of course, you know, do your own due diligence. We're not licensed advisors, but you know, I love Lulu. Every time I go there, the stores are packed. I have a lot of their products. The quality is fantastic. I've had never had any of their products that are in bad shape and uh, they make great products and I'm a very loyal shopper to them. I know there's other cheaper ones out there, but when you love the brand, you're just not going to change it. So Jim, let's hear about Lulu because you did a fantastic trade. Yep. Well, first we're going to talk about the trade I made and that's through the Tastyworks platform. So I... I'm rather new to the options trading, but I'm getting better day by day. I can just feel it and sense it right now. I think my last 11, 10 trades out of 11 have been green. So here's another one. I knew they had great earnings that came out Thursday, and I said, Vegas, this is going to be one we're going to watch in the morning. And so I watched the uh, 205 strike that was going to expire that same day on the 6th. And the first time I got in it, it was down at 64 cents. This is September 6th. And I bought five contracts. And then it started pulling back more, and it got to 41. And so I said, well, I'm going to try to buy it here at 41 and buy some more. But I ended up buying five more at 46. And then by the time, uh, 11 minutes later, by the time it was said and done, I got out of it at 80. So I made $250 on an 11-minute trade. Which it usually, I'm happy if I make 300 a day. And so, yeah, I was pretty excited about that. That kind of just, you know, so the rest of the day I kind of relaxed and just let the trades come to me. And that was Lulu. So let's look at the yearly chart. And when I see something, you know, that I like, especially after I seen the run that it had Friday and played that one. And then decided to play it again the next day. It kind of pulled back, and it gave you a perfect opportunity to buy it at a cheaper uh, price. And that support level, now that I look at it, is right was right around here at 265, and it did have a high of 204.44, and did pull back to that area. So that, you know, that's a four dollar, four and a half dollar dip, and ended up closing at 203.14. So I'm going to put another little support line right in here at 201.58. What I think it's going to start doing now is creating a new channel. So we don't want it to go any lower than this 192.75. And that, I mean, and, but I think we could hit maybe the top of this resistance here at 194.99. Somewhere it's going to pull back and it's going to start creating a little support down here for probably the next couple of days next week. And then try to get back up here and break that resistance high up here at 204.44. I'm going to call it 203.97 myself. It's going to be the resistance that I have to see. But I think what I want to see, and I'm going to pull up this yearly chart one more time. Right there. I think we're going to form a new channel up in here because we've had too big of a breakup. I mean, the thing bounced up all the way from uh, 174 all the way up to 204 something. So it's going to have to settle down a little bit and start breaking new resistances. Earnings came out. Usually it kind of will pull back a little bit and then have a retracement bounce. And that's Lulu. I'm 100% bullish on it, but I think the bears might have a little bit of their way with it. And then the bulls can get back in because it is a very strong company and a strong stock. And then the last one we're going to talk about is in a lot of people's kitchen cupboards, and that's CPB. Yeah, so I want to talk about Campbell's Soup. Um, you know, Campbell's Soup has launched the, they call the Champions of Chunky brand platform. They're the official sponsor of the NFL. They've teamed up with the stars at the NFL with Dak Prescott and Saquon Barkley. 
for a really creative branding called Champions of Chunky. And, uh, you know, they're just trying to do, um, you know, promote the Chunky Soup. And they said that they want to have champions who play a huge role in their lives. And so they're trying to, you know, promote the fact that, you know, if you're a champion, you're going to eat this kind of soup. Very interesting marketing campaign. They're going to be a lot of social media on this. Um, they're going to also have a partnership with Twitch. And they're also going to have a live streaming platform uh, for the gamers on a chunky food um, sort of venture that they're going to be doing to promote this new chunky.com. You can check it out. Um, it's also on YouTube, youtube.com slash chunky soup. So you can see Campbell soup. Okay. They're going to be competing big time with a lot of the no name brands that have the chicken broth, the beef broth that you see at the store. So they're really going to come down very heavy and have a serious marketing campaign on this new Campbell's Chunky. So, Jim, I want to hear about Campbell's Soup because I've never traded this, never bought it, never even paid attention to it. Um, I cannot believe how cheap this was yep. um, earlier this year and how it's actually, quite frankly, slowly climbing up quite nicely and definitely, I think, one to watch um, in terms of the, you know, consumer goods, processed packaged food sector. Yeah. Um, so let's hear your take on Campbell Foods, our Campbell Soup Group. And uh, what do you got to say about that? I say just by looking at the yearly chart, I say this is a chart, a stock that likes to hold its own support. And what I mean by that, we had a double bottom here at last year right around the 20, 32, 23 area. It held that pretty well. And then it bounced on up. And broke that resistance area and kind of found support right here at that 36 32 area which you could see a double bottom here and then it tried to break it it couldn't do it but then finally it did break up and here we go again a double top double top resistance which couldn't break it pulled back to a double bottom then we went back up and here we did we did finally break that resistance area which is a yearly pivot point and that's going to be right here, right around the 40, 50 area. And once it broke that, it bounced up and it fell back and it hit that a couple of times. There you go with that double bottom. And then when that third attempt, it just barely touched it with that wick and bounced up, found new highs. So this is a chart that likes to, resport, likes to support its own supports and its own resistances. You see here we had the double top resistance breakout, pulled out, didn't even touch it, just went ahead and bounced right above it. So we, we've done that a couple times, did it right here after this double top breakout. She bounced up, bounced right, right to it and broke out from it. So let's pull up the 20 day. We have a low support right here at 43.67. And we have that first area of support right down here at 44.60. It can pull back to this area of 44.32. So somewhere in that's going to be your first support. Your second one's going to be right here at 45. And the resistances that we got to break is going to be right here at the 45.90 area. If we can break past that, we can go back to last week's highs of 48 bucks. And the resistance is, though, at 47.45. So this is one you're going to have to keep on your watch list. Pull back, low support, 43.67. Resistance to break, 45.90. To back here to 47.45. C, P, B. And that's it for I Love Stocks. And like I said before, I'm going to go back to the website here. Please ring, subscribe and ring that bell for future updates. We do also have our stock twit links right here. And we do follow, hit us to follow us there, Pintergeist. And also we have the Twitter link. And hit <laughs> follow us on Twitter. Pinterest. 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 <laughs> Jim's thinking of the movie, Poltergeist. Um, so uh, for those of you that follow, I mean, if you have social media, please follow on Twitter. I have to say sometimes it's a lot of work in real time to post on stock twits because i find that i can't just cut and paste i have to actually save the file and then upload it, it takes yep. a long time 
So sometimes I just find posting on Twitter is just so much faster. I'm going to have to talk to uh, stock tweets about that feature. Um, but uh, definitely find that posting on Twitter is just so much easier. Just I'm able to just copy and paste and uh, stock tweets. I can't seem to do that. So um, definitely follow both channels because sometimes I can't uh, update it's just moving too fast and I just faster to update on Twitter. But then if you follow on stock tweets, you won't get the update. So I try my best to update both. Um, and they do synchronize with each other, but I'm saying that the upload time just takes longer. So hope you guys have a great weekend. Gave you some really good picks for the week. Uh, don't forget to follow and subscribe our YouTube and please come join the free trial. Uh, we welcome anyone to come for a free trial. There's no risk involved. We are always here on voice helping everybody. And we do um, share ideas in real time to help everyone. And uh, we have great support also with the trade exchange team. We have the voice team. We have so much action going on in this room. I'm telling you, it feels like you're in a Wall Street firm. So come on by the chat room, a free trial, and then you decide if you want to join us or not. And if you don't, that's okay. We appreciate any feedback. And we hope you guys have a great weekend. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow, Monday. Right. This is I Love Stocks, uh, September the 8th, 2019, and have a great trading week. We love stocks.